We're going to make a parallel plate capacitor with these copper sheets and some Lego. Because, I mean, you know, why not? Now the reason we're doing this is because we're doing a scientific experiment for our friends at Little Barista. Hence, I'm surrounded by bags of coffee beans. Now Little Barista is a coffee shop in Burnley in East Lancashire in the UK. And if you live in Lancashire and you've not been to Little Barista, sort yourself out, get down there because it's excellent. Now they also have a roaster in the shop, which is not only super cool, but they also roast some awesome coffee. Now you can now get your hands on this with a subscription at home. So do yourself a favor, use the link in the description below and get some fantastic coffee. Now you're probably quite reasonably thinking, why Lego? If he's just doing this for a YouTube gimmick, I'm gonna switch off and go and watch something else. Well, it's not a gimmick. Um, I've got to keep these plates exactly three millimeter separation uniformly. And I've got a polycarbonate base to build it on. Uh, and Lego allows me to build a very precise structure quite flexibly. So I can leave some holes in it to connect the wires to the plates of the capacitor. Uh, and it's also made from ABS, acrylonitile butadiene styrene for the geeks, which will have minimal impact on the electromagnetic properties of our capacitor. So how are we gonna do this? Well, first of all, I'm gonna solder some wires to each of these plates so that I can test the capacitance with our capacitance meter. Uh, now, I'm going to have to use the blowtorch to heat this up first because that's a lot of copper to heat with a soldering iron, so we're going to use the blowtorch. Uh, then I'm going to build the structure with the Lego for either side of the capacitor and I'm going to stick the plate to the Lego with double-sided tape. Now the reason I'm using double-sided tape is because I might want to take it apart again. And the reason I might want to take it apart again is because I'm only going to solder initially one wire to each plate. But because we're using the capacitance meter, which uses an AC signal to detect the capacitance, uh, I'm just a bit concerned that the way the electromagnetic wave spreads out across the plate might cause some issues. Uh, I'm not sure, so I'm going to see how it goes, but I want to be able to adjust the structure afterwards if, if I need to. Once I'm happy, I'm going to glue it up to our polycarbonate base. And if I'm really happy, I'm going to stick some polycarbonate sides on the capacitor to make the final article. Um, I, I am going to move this coffee because obviously, I mean, it's in the way. You know what I mean? Right. Q montage. Thank you. 
All right, moment of truth. We've built our capacitor. It is ready to test. It's not quite fully glued up yet because we want to make sure it's working. So using the equation for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor, I've calculated that this should be around 29.5 picofarads. So it's a 10 centimeter plate with a three millimeter gap. Uh, so I've got the capacitance meter ready and it's been zeroed, so let's test it. I'm gonna film it with this, because uh, you guys can't see it there, and I don't want you to think I'm cheating. So here we go. Zeroed. All right, we're getting just over 32 picofarads, which is not bad, is it, for a capacitor made at a Lego by hand on the table. Uh, I think that deserves a brew with this little burst of coffee. What do you reckon? Nice. Buy a little barista. Link in the description. All right, so the next step is to get this glued up so that it's fixed in position. Uh, we also need to put some polycarbonate sides on the capacitor because we need this cavity between the plates to be sealed on three sides and just open at the top for reasons which will become clear in the next video. So let's get that done. And here we have our finished Lego capacitor. Now I think that's looking pretty tasty. I think you'll agree. Um, let's have a look at it from all angles, just so you can admire this beautiful construction. There you go. You see the polycarbonate allows us to see into this gap. Now uh, that is critical because when we're using this for the experiment for which we intend, we need to be able to see that the gap in the capacitor is completely and properly filled. You see, I padded it out slightly with these 3M command strips. That was good just for making sure it's uh, the right size. And I've actually reduced this gap to 2.6 millimeters, which should give it a greater capacitance, which is fine because the experiment that we're gonna do with this, a bigger capacitance is actually better. Uh, so let's test this. One, to see if we're correct about the capacitance. Uh, and two, just to make sure it's still working. So I've zeroed the capacitance meter, get that set up, and I will show you on here. Yeah, okay, so we're up to nearly 40 picofarads, and, and it is still working, which is good. Now you're probably wondering why we've built this capacitor in the first place. Although I expect some of you might have a bit of an idea by now. Well, I'm not going to tell you just yet. So if you'd like to know, make sure you subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so that you'll see the next video in this series where we'll be using this capacitor for an experiment in the Little Barista coffee shop and roastery in Burnley. So please join us for that. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.